It's no secret that China cracks down on its own dissidents. Inside the country, the regime in Beijing always crushes anything that sees the world differently outside of its communist ideology. But in recent years, the Chinese Communist Party seems more willing than ever to ignore international borders and norms, being ever more bold as it wields its hammer also into other sovereign countries. A secret police station here in New York run by the Chinese government. Intimidate individuals in immigrant communities. They're in France, Peru, Canada, South Africa, even New Zealand. And that includes South Korea. The Asian country is an important American ally, with its strategic importance far exceeding its geographic size. There, a US-based dance company is faced with a bizarre situation. Despite their success across the globe, not a single Korean theater dares to host them in their upcoming show season. Not because the Koreans don't like them, but due to pressure coming from China. And that pressure has followed this company for over 14 years. But why? Why is the Chinese regime making such a big deal of this performing arts group? What are they so afraid of? Our investigation team went to Korea as we dig into the situation, we realize the scope is much deeper than what appears on the surface. Speaking with key experts makes us realize the CCP's red hands have reached into Korean society far deeper than we had expected. The power runs every sphere of Korean society. It's a reality, unfortunately. Inside university, Seoul National University, we have a Xi Jinping library just uh, demonstrating and advertising CCP. Even more serious is that a total of over 100 members of the National Assembly established a pro-China group within the parliament called the Korea-China Parliamentary Alliance. I believe that pro-communists control the National Assembly. And because of Korea's strategic importance... If somebody asked me to point out what is next the flesh point on the world, then I would say Taiwan first and then Korean Peninsula second. What's at stake is just as dire for the Koreans as for us from across the ocean. This will lead to the Republic of Korea becoming a vassal state of China without the need for war. This situation is foreseeable. For China, it, they do not want to have a pro-West uh, democracy on their border. I worry about that because of um, just how important South Korea is in stopping the advance of communism. I'm, I'm really, really concerned about their infiltration. Our investigation begins with the Chinese embassy in Seoul, Korea. Hello, Mr. Jung. Uh, my name is Steve Lance with NTD out of Washington, D.C. Bureau. How are you? Which TV are you from? I am from NTD Television. I'm actually here in Seoul, South Korea, uh, investigating the CCP's um, involvement in uh, interfering and in influencing theaters in Seoul, South Korea. Shen Yun Performing Arts, it's a classical Chinese dance show based out of New York that travels uh, around Shen Yun, them. Not a Shen Yun performance. Yes, yes. So I guess my, my question to you is, is it still the Chinese embassy's stance that they will prevent, try to prevent Shen Yun from performing in South Korea? The Chinese embassy has been informing the Korean side of China's position against the, the Shen Yun performance by we send, we will tell them uh, it's not uh, legal to let the Shen Yun performing arts uh, using the, 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 the fake uh, proposed to apply the animation in the Korean theater to have their performances. This is our position. This admission is a rare acknowledgement from Chinese authorities. The regime admitted that it has been silencing companies even on foreign soil. Local Shen Yun organizers say that Seoul's two major theaters have thus far rejected the group's bid to perform in 2024 as a result of pressure from the CCP. And that's just the tip of the iceberg. 
in the CCP's nearly two-decade-long campaign against Shen Yun. Since Chen Yun was established in 2006, uh, the Chinese Communist Party has really used a wide array of tactics to try to target every aspect of our operation. So anything from espionage, breaking into people's homes, this is all here in the United States, uh, hacking our websites, our email, to uh, slashing our tires on our buses and our trucks in very dangerous ways, tampering with our gas tanks, following us around, threatening family members back in China, blocking people from leaving China who want to join Shen Yun. And then the most common one is harassing the theaters and intimidating theaters and government officials around the world to try to stop performances from happening, cancel contracts, uh, pull out sponsorships, carries over as well to the propaganda that the CCP has against Shen Yun and putting inserts in newspapers that uh, like the China Watch, which was in the Washington Post a few years ago, pretending like it's actual content, but it's actually a paid ad slandering Shen Yun. Despite all efforts, the Chinese regime's attempt to stop Shen Yun from performing has been largely unsuccessful in other countries, though it's a different story in South Korea. But before we dive into this specific case, we have to ask, what is it about this dance company that makes the Communist Party so afraid? Since 2006, Shen Yun has been reviving the essence of Chinese civilization. Why do you think it is that the CCP is so afraid to go to all these lengths that you mentioned uh, to target Shen Yun? Well, first of all, Shen Yun is based in New York. So we're an American company performing traditional Chinese culture in a way that they are not doing. And so we explicitly say, we're going to take this culture that the Chinese Communist Party has spent seven decades trying to destroy. What Shen Yun is presenting on stage is the ancient virtues and values of Chinese civilization, five millennia of civilization. But this is really a universal thing. The values, the ideas of integrity, compassion, loyalty, courage, faith, a belief in something greater than ourselves, is something that's really very fundamentally human. And I think that's what the Chinese Communist Party is very afraid of because they are trying to instill a different ideology, a very materialistic one, a very shallow one. But here comes Shen Yun, it touches about something very, very deep in people. And that's why you see people from any country in the world, they'll come see the show and they're crying and they don't even know why. It's because something deep inside of them is touched and is awakened. Shen Yun is an art form and love to learn the history and love to see the beautiful dances I mean, I think Korean people have right to watch that, how they're keeping that Chinese beautiful history and tradition. So they should not stop that. Shen Yun is uh, able to take any topic and put it on stage. And a topic that's very close to our hearts is the persecution of Falun Gong practitioners in China. This has been going on for 20 years. Shen Yun was started by Falun Gong practitioners. A lot of people, even in our company, have experienced persecution firsthand. We have people who were jailed, we have people who were tortured, we have people who've lost family members, quite a few. And so this is a persecution the Communist Party is saying is not even happening. But we're performing it at Lincoln Center and in South Korea and all over the world in front of VIPs, uh, you know, congressmen, media executives, CEOs, and they're seeing this is, this is real and they're being touched by it. And this is something that the Communist Party has spent 20 years trying to hide. And we're here presenting it on stage. So that's very, very scary for them. Those actions on extension of that persecution on, in outside China. So that's why they uh, try to uh, uh, interfere as much as they can. It was an excellent performance. It was so beautifully surprising, especially now that the themes cover the cultures of the Tang, Han, and Song dynasties. I thought that such works should continue to be seen by Koreans. However, what is concerning is that despite Shen Yun being able to perform worldwide, the only country where it cannot be seen is China. And now only in the Republic of Korea, the performance has been obstructed, which is quite embarrassing. There's nothing offensive by the performance. I mean, this is something, it, it is a beautiful traditional dance uh, sharing the Chinese culture, yes, before communism. Experience but that's where they, that's the tradition of, of the country and the people, and it should be shared. 
important. It is a reflection of the long arm of the PRC's growing, you know, political uh, repression. With its rise and growing international reach, it is increasingly exerting that political power that it holds domestically increasingly abroad. While the performance is a performance of traditional Chinese culture, there's also something very American about what Xin Yun is doing because we, in a way, represent the hope of artistic freedom, the hope of freedom of speech, of freedom of belief. Korean theaters often claim competition as the reason for denying the show, but local Shen Yun organizers have found cases where there was eventually no other show booked on the same day that Shen Yun had applied and got denied. And in one incident that received international attention in 2016, court documents revealed the real reason behind the denial. Seoul has always been a very difficult city for us to get a theater in because it's the capital and the Chinese embassy is there and they've tried for years. But that year we got KBS Hall. This is the most prestigious hall in South Korea. All the theaters in the major theaters in South Korea are government affiliated. So they're run by the local or the federal government there. And as a result, they're more susceptible to pressure. But we got the hall. However, a few months before then, KBS received letters from the Chinese embassy and they received pressure from the government uh, to cancel the show and they canceled it. The broadcaster complied despite thousands of tickets having already been sold. But a month before the show, this was in April 2016, the local presenter went to the district court and said, we have a contract, uh, we're selling tickets, you cannot be canceling our show, this is illegal. And uh, the judge said, yes, okay, you're allowed to perform. And so tickets went back on sale, people were buying them. And then what happened was two days before the shows were gonna start, the same judge in the same district court uh, basically reneged on his decision and overturned it and said, okay, the shows are now canceled, explicitly citing a letter from the Chinese embassy, citing financial losses to KBS potentially if they allowed Shen Yun to perform and basically saying, listen, if you cancel Shen Yun shows, yes, you owe these people some money and you, know, you may have a financial loss, but you'll have a greater loss if you lose the opportunity to do business with China, therefore it's not worth the risk. And so all of the you know, legality, the, the freedom of uh, ex expression in South Korea, democracy, rule of law, all that was thrown out the window because of a little bit of pressure from the Chinese embassy. The Chinese Communist Party has exerted pressure on our Republic of Korea's media organization, KBS, as well as our nation's important performance venues, particularly those run by local governments, and even pressured universities to completely block this performance. This fact is shocking and embarrassing. While there were challenges along the way, the year 2022 marked a turning point for the worse. In all, 13 local government-affiliated theaters eventually turning their backs on Shen Yun, including one that had a 10-year relationship with the company. That's after the possible deterioration of relations with China was brought up in an internal meeting at City Hall. All 13 local governments unanimously rejected Shen Yun, which is highly unlikely without strong government intervention. In fact, there are other reasons why regional government leaders reject Shen Yun performances. In the early 2000s, there was a secret agreement between Zheng Zemin and President Kim Dae-jung. The agreement supposedly made Korea adhere to China's stance on the Taiwan, Tibet and Falun Gong issues, leading many theaters in our country to receive this label. NTD's investigation team has reached out to relevant Korean theaters, government agencies, as well as over 40 Korean parliamentary members. We've received no response before the release of this film. The U.S. Embassy in Korea says they have no comments on the issue. The Chinese embassy in South Korea has been using its economic leverage to pressure theaters in South Korea to try to block performances by an American company Shen Yun Performing Arts. So my question is, does it remain a concern by the State Department that in such incidents like this, China is using its economic pressure to influence the freedom of expression in an ally country? 
broadly, I would say, it, of course, continues to remain of concern. Uh, the PRC has a very clear track record of using um, economic coercion and otherwise in a, uh, in, a, in a wide array of countries, not just necessarily uh, the ROK. But uh, this is, of course, something that we're going to continue to address in close partnership with uh, the ROK, with Japan, with other countries um, uh, in the Indo-Pacific as well. I was shocked. Frankly, I was shocked, but I think that this is an illustration of how bad things are in South Korea. So ultimately, it's the Korean government that can make a decision. So why do you think that uh, Shen Yun being canceled and interfered with is able to happen in a, what you would otherwise call a free and democratic South Korea? To me, it just seems like a lack of courage. You need to take that step and say, okay, you know what? No, we're going to push back. This is South Korea. This is our democracy. We are not the People's Republic of China. We're not North Korea for that matter. Otherwise, what's the difference? If you just come and tell us what we can and cannot perform on stage, how is this not Norwegian society? And so I think they need to realize that their democracy is in danger. Their freedom is in danger. How big is the CCP's footprint here in South Korea? During the last uh, 40 years and 30 years, the CCP has invested a bunch of political asset and economic, economic investment and cultural investment as well to South Korean society. So the CCP has succeeded in entangling Korean society in China's money. China is South Korea's largest export partner, South Korea's largest import partner, South Korea's largest trading partner. Let us not even talk about South Korean investment in China. Uh, many of the goods produced in China and subsequently exported to the United States, to Europe, and to, to many other parts of the world are produced with South Korean capital goods. In a nutshell, China has successfully reformed and opened up and has created a reasonably good society without overthrowing the communist system. As a result, many South Koreans think that instead of believing in freedom and democracy, we should make North Korea more like China. This has led to the increasing view that China's system is better than our existing freedom and democracy. Over time, South Koreans have become less confident in freedom and democracy, which is a worrying trend. Therefore, there is an emerging tendency for many people to think that the CCP system is superior to our own freedom and democracy. We are also very much concerned about the existence of the Confucius Institutes. Still, we have 39 uh, institutes, but that's the largest number in the world, you know. In, in many other countries, they are kicking out that institute, but the, this government still let them operate here. When we invited uh, those uh, Confucius Institute, uh, people tried to understand China more in them. But the problem is that what, what is happening inside of uh, Confucius uh, institution is spreading CCP ideas, communism ideas, Maoism ideas. We have a Xi Jinping library in the Central Library of Seoul National University with the books donated by Xi Jinping. Nothing but just demonstrating and advertising CCP. Just to put it into perspective, uh, I guess uh, this would be like MIT, prominent universities in the United States, creating a library on campus for Saddam Hussein, brutal dictators. Xi Jinping is overseeing a country that is responsible for multiple genocides. Um, so this isn't normal behavior in a democratic nation. It, it is really absurd, really absurd. First, regarding the purpose of Confucius Institutes, it can be summarized in two main aspects. The first is to train pro-China intelligence workers, which is the primary objective. The other objective is to widely disseminate pro-China public opinion. 
This will lead to a situation where typically the Chinese plan their infiltration for up to 30 years, which is a frightening point. Therefore, if people graduate from Confucius Institutes in their 20s, 20 to 30 years later they will become the core force at the age of 40 to 50. These elite pro-China individuals will be selected as government officials, presidents or members of parliament within the context of pro-China public opinion. This will lead to the Republic of Korea becoming a vassal state of China without the need for war. This situation is foreseeable. I should confess the situation is vulnerable in South Korea. Most of South Koreans are busy uh, making money and make a living. Uh, they simply don't know what's, what's happening. So if we have another a different, ideologically dangerous people uh, take political power, uh, then uh, they will allow Chinese operation like that. Then South Korea can change, uh, can change as a different country. It's really important for your audience to know that South Korea almost elected a communist in the last election. Uh, back um, last, last year in March, it was the closest election in South Korean presidential history. I contend that the people that made sure that Yoon was elected against the communist was the population of North Koreans who have escaped that are now voting citizens of South Korea. There's over 33,000. They worked their hearts out for Yoon to get elected because Yoon stood for freedom and democracy. But it's hard for Americans to fully understand what's happening in South Korea because we see this as a sparkling country, but they came very close to electing a communist. So the communist infiltration in South Korea is extremely influential. A total of over 100 members of the National Assembly established a pro-China group within the parliament called the Korea-China Parliamentary Alliance in December last year. Therefore, the penetration of the Chinese Communist Party into the Republic of Korea has reached a much broader extent than we could have imagined. I believe that pro-communist, pro-dictatorships control the National Assembly. So it's a very serious problem that we need to be aware of. Just to give you an example, the South Korean Assembly passed legislation several years ago that banned leafleting, that banned balloon launches, that banned the uh, sharing of information across the border into North Korea. Why did they do that? Because the Kim Jong-un regime demanded it was, had such an impact because it was opening the people of North Korea to the truth. But the National Assembly voted to ban that in October, just recently. That was ruled unconstitutional, what that National Assembly did. But that's what we're facing. So in a way, it's shocking that this has happened in South Korea. But when we understand the environment there, then it, it would make sense if you have a, such a strong influence by the Communist Party in South Korea that they would try to ban performances like Shenyang, which focuses on the Chinese culture and the beauty of the Chinese culture that the CCP has tried to wipe out. Tara Oh is a retired U.S. Air Force officer and fellow at East Asia Research Center. She's been documenting the spread of communism into Korea's education and cultural sphere. Culturally, they um, have been trying to make uh, some of the Chinese CCP heroes uh, into heroes of South Korea as well. So the latest uh, controversy is about Zhang Lucheng. Um, he was a CCP member and he is credited for um, writing the official song for the PLA, the, the CCP's uh, army, People's Liberation Army. And he is also credited for writing the official song for North Korea's um, KPA, Korean People's Army, as well. Um, in fact, he wrote hundreds of songs, uh, in, which include praising Mao, Mao Zedong, as well. So he's considered top 100 uh, heroes of the CCP. But the city of Gwangju has also idolized him. They created a uh, street uh, named after him, made a statue of him 
in Guangzhou. They held an annual music fest honoring him and having kids singing in competition where they sing songs that praises Mao in South Korea. Mao is the one who sent uh, Chinese troops to Korea during the Korean War, um, which killed a lot of you know, Koreans, both South Koreans and North Koreans as well. Um, so he is not somebody to be praised in South Korea. That is very ironic. And now the latest thing they want to do is build a park in honor of him, at, uh, which costs about $4 million of taxpayers' money. Gwangju mayor is not backing down, although there are oppositions uh, in Gwangju from uh, citizen groups. So that is uh, just one uh, of cultural warfare by China. The Chinese CCP is uh, very much active in using internet and, and cyber operations. They try to manipulate uh, people's opinion, public opinion. Uh, they run a uh, 50 cent army. No one in the politics, no one in the media is active in dealing with this the dangerous situation. Just to be clear, 50 cent army is just a, a, a group of tens of thousands of people out there that the CCP employs to just mass messaging campaigns and forums and chat rooms and comment sections to Correct. sway public opinion. Correct. And there's nobody combating this. Yeah, and the, and the number of that group is really huge because uh, China has lots of people and they have lots of uh, Korean Chinese. They hire them to manipulate public opinion. In South Korea. In South Korea. It's really unfortunate. American citizens may expect that, okay, now we have a new government in, in Seoul, uh, so everything will be okay. But that's not true, really. Still many government officials uh, implanted by the former government is still working within the government. What happened when uh, former President Moon Jae-in left the office? Right before he left the office, he placed thousands of people who support his ideology into various government offices. And so they continue the old policy. South Korea, an American ally where our parents and grandparents fought and died to keep them free from communism, is now falling back into the specter of communism without us even realizing it. Why has the CCP's infiltration been so successful in South Korea? And what are the consequences for America if that country changes its color to become a communist country or a de facto ally of the CCP? Why should this issue of Beijing's infiltration in South Korea matter to the U.S. government? Uh, it's a very uh, interesting question. <laughs> if America loses uh, Korea, America is likely to lose Japan. But the West Pacific will be an uh, internal sea of the CCP. The China, of course, uh, regard uh, South Korea as a, a vulnerable weak link in the American encirclement of China. This is how they perceive South Korea. You know? But for South Korea, uh, if we fail, then we will fail our nation. Uh, then you will know what will follow, you know, killing field. Or, so we, we, we have seen the, the history of communization in many cases, you know. So we imagine what will happen. So that's why our strategy, uh, our co collaboration in security is uh, a matter of uh, uh, die or live. And I do think that there has been a gradual transformation in South Korea with regards to its public attitudes towards China. But nevertheless, though, it, you know, I think Beijing still sees uh, South Korea as the weakest link in the United States alliance network in East Asia. China would rather see a dictator like Kim Jong-un on its border rather than see a vibrant South Korea. For China, they do not want to have a pro-West uh, democracy on their border. I worry about that because of um, just how important South Korea is in stopping the advance of communism. I'm, I'm really, really concerned about their infiltration. If the, uh, somebody asked me to point out what is next the flash point uh, on the world, then I would say Taiwan first and then Korean Peninsula second. 
What is this battle ultimately about? Is it just about international politics, a power struggle between the world's two biggest superpowers, or is there something more? We really have to remember that what the United States did for South Korea or, you know, Korea Peninsula, because my both parents, I said that, you know, came from North Korea during the Korean War, and then they came down to Busan and they met, um, and I was born. So I am so grateful to U.S. military services, and they came, and they actually made South Korea where they are. And then I was actually talking about the, you know, what the United States is supporting humanitarian stuff to South Korea after the war that, you know, we were really down. I think a lot of support came, it went in to South Korea was the reason now that, you know, it's one of the really great, strong country economy wise, that very strong country. What was happening is we're ceding ground. South Korea is ceding ground, the U.S. is ceding ground in this battle between the free world and the CCP. It's really not that different from what we were seeing during the Cold War. We know that the CCP, not only in China, but around the world, tries to control the narrative of what people are allowed to think, what people are allowed to watch, what people are allowed to believe. And now they can do it not only in China, they can also do it in South Korea. Whereas as Americans and as people of the free world, we want everybody to have the right to see, think, and believe what they wish. And we're losing that in South Korea. South Koreans are losing it. But is there hope? Is there anything we can do to stop the red wave from continuing to spread into Korea and beyond? Do we have any support, not only in the political world, but on the ground? There was a poll in South Korea recently, and 92% of the South Koreans support the alliance. Yeah, they, they view the alliance as being very important. So despite what happened under the previous administration, we have to understand that we have to sort of separate the people who support the alliance from some of the people who are going to the leadership positions. The South Koreans are fundamentally upset with the fact that China protects and supports the North Korean regime of Kim Jong-un that's starving its own people, oppressing its own people, procure the, the resources it needs, the hard currency it needs in order to develop its nuclear and ballistic missile program. These are programs that threaten the lives of the 53 million South Koreans living in the South. China has been repatriating North Korean refugees knowing full well that these North Koreans will 100% be put in detention centers and tortured, in some cases publicly executed, especially if it's found out they were trying to get to South Korea or they had been introduced to Christian. People support the alliance, but that's because they value the common shared values, which is freedom. So I think it's really important to call attention to the issues, but to speak out very powerfully about this. In fact, I'm getting ready to go to Korea because I'm going to be speaking at a conference, hoping waking up the consciousness of the young people to realize what's at stake. Which future do you want? You want a dark place like the North Korea? Because the Korean Peninsula is a beautiful illustration of the difference between what it's like to live under communism and what it's like to live under a republic. I actually just visited Korea recently, uh, and they are certainly looking for opportunities to be less dependent on China, to work more with the United States. And I think it needs to be an international effort where we work with each other because we are like-minded democracies. We share our values. Korea must find that balance between economic prosperity and maintaining, preserving the heart and soul of the nation, which relies on a fundamental set of rights and principles. That's what we share with South Korea. That's what we share with Japan. That's what we share with our European allies. If we, if we lose that, how different are we from the Chinese or the Russians? So it will be very important to focus on those core values and freedom of religion, freedom of expression, freedom of the arts are at the very core of those fundamental values. I think we certainly as members of Congress can express our concerns and we will with the ambassador, with uh, Korean officials uh, that we don't appreciate that an American dance company is not being allowed to perform there because of pressure from communist China and try to get them um, back into 
the performance and back into that country in the theater. We must be there strong to help and support and build to deter what the Communist Chinese Party is doing. The same thing they're doing in South Korea with those performing arts, they're doing that in the free associated states. Shen Yun should not be merely regarded as one of many performances. It represents the values of alliance between the Republic of Korea and the United States. However, if we only seek assistance from the United States, when we need it, the United States will lose trust. Given the instability of the international situation, war could break out on the Korean peninsula at any time, and we must prove that we are a reliable ally. Therefore, in order to demonstrate that we are a trustworthy ally, we should allow Shen Yun to perform in representative venues in the Republic of Korea. As an American-based company, what, what would be your appeal to the American government? I think the American government should be really concerned because South Korea has been an ally for many years. We have a long history and uh, we have a, we've made a strong commitment to South Korea and, and paid a, a very deep price to allow them to have that freedom. And they're part of the free world. And I think if you talk to people in South Korea, and I certainly have, they very much value that. They don't see themselves as North Korea. The, the contrast is so dramatic just a few miles away. And for Americans, if we want to still have allies around the world, if we want to not be the last bastion of freedom, then in South Korea, we need a stronger presence from our American embassies and consulates. We need a stronger voice to say, this is an American company. We need to protect American interests. And in this case, the American interests are the interests of freedom and are your interests too. Yes, I sent a letter out to President. Yes, I sent the letter out to uh, Park Jin, that Secretary of Foreign uh, Services. And I sent out all the letters out there because I was very upset that, you know what, let's put this as art. It, this is art. And then this is Chinese history. This is Chinese tradition, Chinese instruments. It's just perfect time to learn that, you know, what kind of beautiful history they have. That, you know, Koreans, Japanese, we always try to keep our history and kids can learn from there. And we all remember beautiful customs, beautiful history. You know what, when you're stopping it, it's not really good. I am sorry that I didn't get a letter from President Yun back about Xinyang. But you know what, I hope that you know what, he's gonna raise his voice and next year, we're gonna bring them back. Do you have any message to the South Korean president, uh, Mr. Yoon, in terms of what you would advise or suggest to him to do in the face of threats from communist China? Don't let back, continue your fight. Know that you have your ally with the United States and the Congress are there to support, just like what you see in all over, all over the nation as well. So that, that support will continue. The Communist Chinese Party, we do not want them to get any further ground. We need to stop their threat. We need, it's a defense. They're not the aggressors here, they are. And once we do that, then we can support the peace, we can build the economics of, of our nations, and we're all in a better place to live. There is a Chinese proverb that says, once a gentleman's word is spoken, even a team of four horses cannot overtake it. This proverb suggests that a leader's decisions hold immense authority and can shape the destiny or direction of the people they govern. In 2022, the South Korean president, Yoon suk yeol campaigned and was elected on a pro-U.S., tough-on-China platform. South Korea is now at a critical inflection point. Will it be business as usual with the treacherous Chinese regime, or will South Korea side with freedom human rights, and the universally embraced values.